don't get into my grooming box. I'm going to groom you soon. Child, come round. Look at child, come round. this is me and today I'm going to be doing a winter groom tack up and ride with me so the other day I literally got back from Australia so I haven't ridden Casper in over three weeks so it'll be kind of interesting to see what he's like because today I'm actually going to be jumping him so the first thing I need to do to get everything ready is go out into the arena and set up all the jumps setting up all of the fences so I've made a bit of a course I've also set everything at 80 centimeters so that's kind of like Casper's comfortable height so I know that if he has a spook or a little bit of an issue at a fence um, I can still kind of try and get him over if that makes any sense but then it's not too low that he's like nah I'm just gonna like you know not try and not jump nicely over so that's what I've sort of done I've also put up a lot of spooky fences so fences that he's not the keenest of so the black water tray he absolutely hates so that's why I've not put the poles on top yet I've left them by the side because I'd like to trot him over first he hasn't seen it for a good couple of months so I think it'll be quite interesting to see if he's like oh yeah I've driven that before it'll be fine or if he has a little bit of a meltdown we'll see um, I've also put up this sort of dazzle board or this um, really sort of weird looking filler the black and white one again he's looked at that a couple of times but then he has jumped it a few times so we'll see what he thinks to that i've also got the rainbow filler as well that again i've left out just because it's a little bit bigger and i'm actually going to be using the yellow fence over there as a warm-up so i'll use it as my cross pole and then i'll put it to an upright and then i'll put the filler in i've also got an arrow head on the corner as well so that'll be some good fun going over that also it's a skinny so because it's on a corner as well that's that's going to really test our straightness and then behind me we also have an oxa it's just a plain oxa but casper is one of those horses that prefers uprights i know most horses kind of like prefer oxes because i don't know casper is just like an upright horse like he loves uprights it doesn't matter if he chips in or anything so we've got an oxa there as well it's pretty plain so just because it's a little bit wider we'll see how he goes with that as well um so yeah that's pretty much the course um that's all the fences um, I've got a little bit of a course in my mind at the moment, but while I'm thinking about that, it's time to go and get Casper from the field, give him a big groom down because he's probably very muddy, and then get him tacked up. Round. Look at child come round. Nikki. Come on, come this way. Okay, yeah, here's a treat. Good boy. Good boy. Good lad. Love you, Mick. So 
I've just got Casper up from the field. No, nope, don't get into my grooming box. I'm going to be grooming you soon. Um, and he's actually quite muddy, mainly where the rug hasn't been, because where it has, it's kind of acted as a mud shield. So he's nice and white and fluffy where his rug was. However, his legs are probably the most muddy. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is um, get the hose pipe, wash his legs off. This is also great to do to check in case he's lost a shoe while being out in the field. Um, and also means that his legs aren't as muddy for when I pick up his hooves, though so, so my hands don't get all muddy as well. Uh, so yeah, he's kind of falling asleep in the sunshine as well. So I think he's definitely up for a good groom. Casper's hooves are all nice and clean. I'm gonna get my brush out and give him a little bit of a groom. So I'm just gonna undo the clip here on his bridle so I can groom his face because I don't know how he does it, but when he rolls, he loves to rub his face in the mud. It's just not great. So I'm actually gonna be using a plastic curry comb on his face because he literally has like mud dreadlocks. So it's all sort of caked in there. And I just find it's the best brush to use, even though you're not really supposed to. But if you use it really gently, it just helps sort of break up the cakiness if that makes any sense at all and then kind of near his eye I just use my fingers and give it a good rub but just really gently to get sort of the worst of it off and then more sort of up behind his ears he always gets it behind his ears as well I just don't know how he does that but anyway now on to the neck which is a lot easier which you know you just really need to give it a bit of a rub in circular motions to get the majority of the worst of it out but it doesn't actually look too bad once I've used the rubber curry or the plastic curry comb. <laughs> there we go. Oh let's get that little bit on your beardy mate. Now it's time to tackle the mane. And I feel like this is gonna be quite a difficult task because it is just covered in mud dreadlocks. He, I saw this morning, he just went for a massive roll and there's just chunks of mud all the way through it. So it's also got so thick and so long while I've been away. So yeah, this is gonna be a task and a half. Let's go. <laughs> Lastly, I'm going to be using this dandy brush or stiff brush on Casper because he is a field kept pony during the day. So um, this is going to help get all the dust and grime and things out of his coat, but also help um, retain his natural oils. So that's why I'm not going to be using a body brush or a soft brush, especially here. He doesn't actually look too dusty, um, but then when I like flick it around, you can see there's a bit more dust coming off. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be using now. I've just finished um, grooming Casper, so he's as clean as I can get him being a grey. Also, his tail took absolutely forever to brush out because it had so many leaves and sticks and just caked in mud, really. So it was pretty knotty. So lastly, well, what I'm going to do is pick out Casper's hooves. Um, I like to use a separate sort of picking out hoof pick to my little brush I have here. So this is actually a dish brush. I like to use it because it's sort of bigger. So it's really easy to get all the mud out and brush it out. It's just easier having separate ones rather than the hoof pick with a little brush on the end. Because I always find the brush at the end is kind of flimsy and then you have to kind of like twist your hands around. It's just easier to grab a different brush. So yeah, time to pick out his hooves. Now Casper is groomed and all ready to ride, last thing I need to do is get him tacked up. Yes, you are. 
Casper and I are now all tacked up and ready to go. We've also got our matchy matchy green today. <laughs> and um, I'm really excited because I haven't jumped in over three weeks. So it's gonna be really exciting to see what Casper thinks to everything because he's done like a few like cross poles and things, but he hasn't done any like proper, like jumping a whole massive course. So I'm really, like I'm just really excited to jump. I haven't jumped for so long and that's one of my favorite things to do. And Casper's favorite thing to do is jumping as well. So I feel like he might be a little bit excited, but he might be a little bit potato as well. Or he might be a little bit spooky and spicy with the um, colored fillers and things. So I honestly don't know what he's gonna be like to ride. So let's go and see. <laughs> Running out, how could you think I don't? Never somewhere this cold You take away you want But it's never I've just finished warming Casper up, so we've done walk, trot, and canter on both reins. Done lots of circles, transitions, serpentines, just getting him moving, becoming a little bit more supple, getting the rhythm. He's doing really, really well. At the beginning, he was a little bit spooky. He has looked at a few things because my granddad's out in the field somewhere, making some rush rustling and things in the orchard. So he's had a little look at that. He's also had a little look at the chickens. But apart from that, he's done really, really well. He seems really up for jumping today. He's been really enjoying it so far. So time to do a little course. One more fight turns into one more night. And I'm always gonna try and say that it's the last time. But it's never, never enough I'm living in a fool's love Cause I'm burning up for you and I can't let go I feel a sky fall around me and I don't know Diamond lines got me hooked on your false hope Good boy! Okay, so that time is a lot better So I had a little bit of quirks in there So he did, he chipped in a teeny bit to that pink I think I just was a little bit asleep and I didn't really set him up as nicely as I could. Resulting in the yellow, a little bit of a dodgy jump, but he cleared it the second time we did the course. So I was happy with that. He did have to pick his legs up quite a bit though. Then around the purple, he actually landed and was disunited. So his canter was a little bit choppy because he wasn't correct at the back. So he did clear it though, so I was really happy with that. The first time we looked at that, he did have a little bit of a look at it because of that dazzle board kind of thing. Round the second time, perfectly, he actually changed his legs. So it meant that when we did the dog lag round to the water tray again, perfectly jumped the water tray. Really happy with that. He got a little bit long when I go went around the corner. I should have collected him a little bit more, but I wanted him to have his legs. And then by the time we got to the oxa, I wasn't holding him back so much because with the oxa, I really needed to put my leg on a little bit more. Flew over that, really happy. And then he got really long. So the first time we went to the arrowhead, he was just really long. I took him in, cut the corner, cause he was long. And he just sort of scrambled over the arrowhead, which was my fault, I'm really sorry Casp. So I decided we'll go around again, did a circle, got the correct canter, really set him up. I sort of sat up, straightness, boom went over perfectly, so well done Casp, sorry for my riding. <laughs> goodness Casper you're amazing good boy good man so that was such a lovely course so for the end instead of putting them up 
because we haven't jumped for so long, I thought I'd just do one last course, try and get all the striding correct. And I thought, you know, for a little bit of fun, we'd do a bit of a jump off. So I kind of notched it up a speed and we just flew around that course. Here he did get a little bit long, so I had to do a little bit of a half hulk. So I was like, hold it up, mate. We don't want to get too flat. So we just run through the jumps rather than over them. And then when we went to that arrowhead, this time I really sat up, really like, okay, hold it a second, Casper. I know you want to go fast. And um, really set him up nicely to the arrowhead. It flew over. I did give a little bit of reins just because we did go for a slightly longer one because he was in a slightly longer canter because he was going a bit faster. And I didn't want to, because it's so difficult, that arrowhead jump, because it's on a corner. And you want, especially after doing the oxer, and you get a really long canter and you need to really hold it back. And then if you hold it back too much around the corner, the corner's gonna eat up our speed. And if not, by the time you get to the arrowhead, he's gonna be like, oh, don't have enough power. <laughs> so you really have to get that really good, solid show jumping, we're going canter and he just flew all of it i'm so happy with him so well done caspi <laughs> that was such a good show jumping ride for not show jumping in like a month so i'm so happy and i'm gonna get off him now give him a little walk around let him cool down give him an untack and lots and lots of treats for this guy good boy you could just tell he was loving it so much <laughs> everybody I've just finished my ride with Casper he was such a good boy so I've got a little carrot here for him so we can do some carrot stretches he hasn't done them for a while so I see what he what he thinks there you go good boy a little bit more <laughs> break it off good boy okay other side <laughs> good boy. This side again. I sometimes do it so he kind of does the carrot stretch around me. Other times I do it like this. Hey. He's a little bit, he struggles a little bit more this side. Hey. There we go, all the way to the flank. Good boy. I think there's enough for two more? I think there is. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do it so he goes around me this time. Hey. Okay. There we go. He just sometimes likes to walk backwards if I don't do it when he goes around me. Hey. Okay. Stretch it out, boy. Come on, bite it. There we go, is that a big, big, thick chunk left? Yeah. Okay, there you go, you can have the rest. Good boy. It's two favourite things, show jumping and carrots. Yeah. We had a good day. Good boy. Okay, everybody, I'm going to finish off today's video here. If you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye! There <laughs> we go, Mick. Hey. Of course, Mickey has to get a treat as well, so he's getting some carrot too. Yeah. Love you, little man. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> he's just downed it. You've got mud all over your eyes, mate. How'd you get the mud there? Mwah. <laughs>